From the opinion pages of the Wall Street Journal, this is Potomac Watch. Welcome back. I'm Paul Gigo with Joe Sternberg and Kyle Peterson. And we're talking about the Senate races as the fall campaign nears in a very important midterm elections. They're all important, but this one is particularly important for Republicans who want to put a check on President Biden. And money, we were talking about. Money is the mother's milk of politics, as a famous California Democrat to Mr. Unruh once said. And nobody knows that better than Mitch McConnell, who goes out and raises a lot of it. And he has a Senate Leadership Fund PAC associated with him, obviously makes separate independent investments. But even those resources are not unlimited. And it's fascinating. Last week, a Senate Leadership Fund announced that it is going to make a $28 million buy for J.D. Vance in Ohio. Okay. J.D. Vance in Ohio. Ohio. Trump won it by eight. Vance is supposed to be this newfound populist, former venture capitalist, smart as hell, writer of hillbilly elegy. And yet, he has a terrible time raising money coming out of his victory in the primaries. And I think part of the reason is he alienated a fair number of the donors in the Republican Party with some of his positions. He played to the populist wing of the party to win the nomination. But now he needs that money against Tim Ryan, who's very well funded and getting a lot of national Democratic money. And lo and behold, who does J.D. Vance have to call? Better call Mitch, Kyle, to get and help him get that money to be able to save the day. Now, I think J.D. Vance is going to win this in the end. And if he doesn't, it'll be one of the great acts of political malpractice in history. But the fact that they have to spend $28 million of scarce resources on the Ohio race, which should be close to being in the can by now, is extraordinary. And it's a sign of where the Republicans are this cycle. Exactly. And Vance tried to distinguish himself in the Republican primary by being more populist, more right-wing than the next guy. And some of that was specifically hitting at Mitch McConnell. There was a podcast last year. He told the host that he didn't know who he would support as majority leader in the Senate. He said that McConnell was out of touch with where the base is, that the Republican Party needs to move on, bring in new blood, get somebody that the base is actually excited about. Now, I mean, Mitch McConnell knows that that's how the political game is played. I don't think he would have been affronted by these kinds of things playing out in a Republican primary. And he knows that what he wants more than anything is for J.D. Vance to win that seat and give him the big gavel back as majority leader, get him over 51 Republican votes in the Senate. And then, you know, Republicans can control the agenda and block things that President Biden wants to do. And so there's the $28 million coming into Ohio. And maybe you're right that it will make the difference But just the stakes of this, I think, are worth underlining again. And it's not only legislation, but it's nominees. You could have a Supreme Court vacancy coming here in the next two years. And the advise and consent role is purely in the Senate's hands. And so this is one of the big questions that is going to be playing out. And if Republicans lose a lot of these races that they should be winning, we could end up with a very left-wing Supreme Court nominee nominated and confirmed and Republicans shaking their head and thinking, why didn't we win Ohio? Why didn't we win Arizona? And another better call Mitch candidate, Blake Masters, endorsed by Trump, won in Arizona. Now he's saying, well, I think Mr. McConnell will come in and spend. Arizona's going to be competitive. It's going to be a close race. And I hope he does come in, Masters told AP last week. This is the same Blake Masters who said that in the primary, he wants Mitch McConnell to be replaced (laughs) as Republican leader. And Masters is in more trouble than J.D. Vance is in Ohio, I think, because uh, he's had even more trouble raising money. He's further behind against the incumbent Mark Kelly. He could count on Peter Thiel, the financier's money in the primary, but so far he hasn't had the money to compete in the general. He might get it, but this is a big problem, Joe, because Donald Trump can lend you his endorsement. But one thing Donald doesn't do for you is give you money. (laughs) He doesn't take all the money that he raises, and he's raising a ton of money, both off January 6th and particularly after this Mar-a-Lago search by the FBI raising a ton. 
He's not giving it to Senate candidates. Yeah, and I mean, you want to talk about candidate quality issues. I mean, how interesting that he manages to throw his weight behind all of these candidates who haven't figured that out, who don't realize that he might endorse them, hold the rally or two, but they're going to have to turn to this Republican establishment that they despise so much in order for the money and other support that you need to actually win a general election. And, you know, that is something that I think that Republican voters should start cluing into a bit, because this game isn't just about holding rallies and having, you know, a figure ostensibly at the top of the party who has this enormous name recognition. It's about having people who know what has to happen in order to get out there and have some chance at winning these elections. And, you know, this war that people have waged rhetorically on Mitch McConnell over the years has never made an awful lot of sense to me because you can understand the frustration of some of these Republican base voters that when their party is in the majority in Washington, they don't always get their way. If your party is in the minority in Washington, you will never get your way. And I think that McConnell understands that basic reality and is prepared to put money behind it. Look, Mitch McConnell's hardly above criticism. None of us are. And I think he really blew it at the end here, the way he handled Joe Manchin and his opposition for a long time to what became the Inflation Reduction Act. And, you know, he threatened uh, to hold up the CHIPS bill if the Democrats went to that reconciliation strategy. Joe Manchin gave him a feint and said, well, yeah, I don't really like that bill back better. Mitch McConnell gave him the votes to pass the CHIPS bill, and then Manchin turned around and said, okay, well, I'm going to vote for a smaller version of that reconciliation bill, and really pulled a fast one on Mitch when Mitch could have held out that leverage into the fall, as Kim Strassel has written for us. So he's not above criticism, obviously. In politics, nobody is. But the Republicans are going to keep the majority. These candidates are going to have to rely on Mitch's money. It's a tremendous irony. Now, I should say, Kyle, that the Republicans do have some pickup opportunities. Nevada is one where Adam Laxalt is neck and neck with the incumbent Democrat, Catherine Cortez Masto, Joe O'Day, a businessman in Colorado, is within shouting distance of Michael Bennett, the incumbent Democrat. So there are chances. We don't know who the Republican nominee will be in New Hampshire yet. Uh, that's a possibility. So this Senate race is far from over. And summer polls are often misleading. Ron Johnson, the Wisconsin senator, was way behind in the summer six years ago. He's behind again. <laughs> and, you know, we don't know what's going to happen as this closes. And often midterm dynamics tend to reassert themselves in the fall, the underlying dynamics where, and if that happens this time, inflation will become the biggest issue. The economy will become the big issue and issues like abortion and Trump will be less important, Kyle. I think that's right. And part of what makes this so hard to predict is we don't know what the inflation rate is going to be on election day. We don't know what the price of gasoline at the gas pump is going to be on election day. And so it's possible we could still get the vaunted red wave that comes through and sweeps through some of these states. And we do end up with Republican senators in Georgia and Arizona and Nevada and Colorado but it certainly looks like it is a more distant prospect than it did even, I think, several weeks ago. And part of that is the changing dynamic, the inflation numbers and the gas prices going down a little bit. And maybe President Biden is right that we will get more moderation as we head toward November, or maybe he's wrong. That all being said, it still looks like this is a harder fought election than it needed to be for Republicans if they had ignored President Trump's calls and nominated popular electable candidates who have a history of winning these states like Doug Ducey. All right. It's going to be fun to watch as we get into the fall campaign. So buckle up. It's going to be quite a ride. I want to thank you all for listening. Thank Kyle Peterson and Joe Sternberg. And remember, you can catch us on PW Podcast at WSJ.com. And let me have it if you want to do so. We're here every day, and we'll be back to respond to your missives during a future show. Thanks for listening.